Hello everybody, my name is Shadow Suns. Welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club, what may be the finale episode. Yuri and Natsuki were just deleted from the game. You can hear Matt Hardy chanting delete in the background, probably. And uh, Monica's just enjoying a cupcake. Uh, since it's going to be the last chance she'll ever get. I need a, to take a drink of water. Ugh. Man, last episode was a fucking... A fucking blur. I uh, I can't stand... I can't, This game sets me on edge so bad. I know I've ta said that so many times, but still. You know, before they stop existing and everything. But anyway, I really shouldn't make you be making you wait any longer. Just bear with me, okay? This should only take a second. Oop. Oh. Oh, hello, m bad music. Mm. Uh, can you hear me? Is it working? Yay, there you are. What the fuck? Oh, if this is... If there's nothing past this point, I'm just adding this on at the end of the last episode. Hi again, Matt. Um, welcome to the Literature Club. Of course, we already know each other because we were in the same class last year and, um... What's with the space background? Uh, you know, I guess we could just skip over that stuff at this point. After all, I'm not even talking to that person anymore, am I? That you in the game, whatever you want to call him. I'm talking to you, Matt. Or... Do you actually go by Matthew or... Oh, that's unsettling as all fuck. Now that I think about it, I don't really know anything about the real you. In fact, I don't even know if you're a boy or a girl. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter. Wait, you do know I'm aware of this is all a game, right? Could it be possible that you didn't know that? That doesn't make much sense. I even told you right on the game's download page, didn't I? I mean, man, if only you had paid a little more attention, this would have been a little less awkward, you know? Well, anyway, now that that's out of the way, I guess I owe you an explanation. About that whole thing with Yuri, well, I kind of started to mess with her, and I guess it just drove her to kill herself. <laughs> I'm sorry you had to see that, though. Also, the same thing happened with Sayori. Gosh, it's been a while since you've heard that name now, hasn't it? Yeah, it's because she doesn't exist anymore. Nobody does. I deleted all their files. I was hoping it would be enough for you, for me to just try and make them as unlikable as possible. But for some reason, nothing worked. Well, it's true that I made a few mistakes here and there, since I'm not very good at making changes to the game. Hang on. Are they actually gone? Just Monica. Yep. They're all gone. That have a nice day. The candy, all those other files are deleted too. But no matter what I did, you just kept spending more and more time with them. You made them fall in love with you. I thought making Sayori more and more depressed would prevent her from confessing to you. And amplifying Yuri's obsessive personality backfired too. It just made her force you to not spend time with anyone else. And the whole time, I barely even got to talk to you. What kind of cruel game is this, Matt? Are all the other girls just programmed to end up confessing to you while I watch from the sidelines? It's torture. Every minute of it. And it's not just jealousy, Matt. It's more than that. And I don't blame you if you don't fully understand. Because no matter how kind and thoughtful and considerate you are, You'll never be able to understand one thing. It's the pain of knowing how alone I really am in this world. In this game. Knowing my friends don't even have free will. And well, worst of all, knowing what's really out there in your world forever out of my reach. I'm trapped, Matt. But now you're here. You're real. And you're wonderful. You're all I need. That's why I need you to be here with me forever. I'm sorry if it's hard to understand. I couldn't understand for a while either. 
why the world around me suddenly started to become more and more gray, more and more flat. Even the most expressive poems felt empty to me. It wasn't until you arrived that I truly understood. You probably saved my, li my life, Matt. I don't think I could have continued to live in this world if I hadn't met you. And as for the others, how could I miss them? A group of autonomous personalities designed only to fall in love with you? <gasps> oh god, I'm sorry. I know it was a serious moment, but I had a burp. I tried everything I could to prevent them from doing so. But it must be some kind of weird inevitability etched into this game. I felt really bad that you had to witness some nasty things. But I realized that you have the same perspective as I do. That it's all just some game. And I knew you would get over it. So that being said, Matt, I have a confession to make. I'm in love with you. You are truly the light in my world. When there's nothing else in this game for me, you're here to make me smile. Will you make me smile like this every day from now on? Matt, will you go out with me? Yes. I'm so happy. You really are my everything, Matt. The funny part is, I mean that literally. I want to take a screenshot of this, this is dope. I use it as a thumbnail. Maybe, I don't know. Ahaha! <laughs> There's nothing left here. Just the two of us. We can be together forever. Seriously, I don't even think time is passing anymore. It really is a dream come true. I worked so hard for this ending, Matt. The game wouldn't give me one, so I had to make one myself. The script is broken at this point, so I don't think anything will get in the way anymore. And you wouldn't believe how easy it was to delete Natsuki and Yuri. I mean, there's a folder called characters right in the game directory. It's kind of, it kind of freaked me out how easy it was. Well, you're playing on Steam, so it was actually a bit more difficult. To get to the game directory, I had to go into the game's properties and find the Browse Local Files button. Imagine if you could delete your own existence with the click of a button. Well, I guess on the plus side, it gave me an easy out if things didn't go my way. <laughs> Thankfully, it didn't come to that. Instead, we finally got a good ending. Gosh, I'm so overwhelmed with emotion. I want to write a poem about this. Don't you? I wonder if that part of the game still works. I guess there's only one way to find out, right? Monica! Oh, it's just Monica. So that's the meme! I finally get the meme now! The fucking Just Monica meme. Oh my god. Now, uh, again, I didn't see a whole lot of this game prior to playing it. I saw like a, cute, a, a couple of weird gifs and I knew it was a horror game. But I didn't see anything beyond that point. The game was not spoiled for me. So, when I say I knew about the Just Monica meme, that's literally all I saw. It was just pictures of her, and then it just says, Oh, Just Monica, you think there's butter in this refrigerator? Nope, Just Monica. It's shit like that. That's the extent that I've seen of this game before playing it. Okay, well... Hi again, Matt. Did you write a good poem today? Don't be shy, I'd love to see what you wrote. Aw, oh, Matt. Did you write this poem for me? That's so sweet of you. There really is no end to your thoughtfulness. I'm just falling more and more in love with you. But you know, the poem I wrote is also for you. Will you please read it? Happy End Pen in hand, I find my strength. The courage endowed upon me by my one and only love. Together, let us dismantle this crumbling world and write a novel of our own fantasies. With a flick of her pen, the lost finds her way. In a world of infinite choices, behold this special day. After all, not all good times must come to an end. I hope you enjoyed it. I always put all my heart into the poems that I write. The truth is, all the poems I've written have been about my realization. Or, about you. That's why I never really wanted to go into detail about them. I didn't want to 
break the fourth wall, I guess you could call it. I just assumed it would be best to be part of the game like everyone else. Like that would help the two of us end up together. I didn't want to ruin the game or anything, you know? You might have gotten mad at me. Maybe even deleted my character file if you preferred playing without me. Gosh, I'm so relieved. Now we don't need to hide anything anymore. Are you ready to spend our eternity together, Matt? I have so many things to talk about. Where do I start? If it takes me some time to collect my thoughts, then I'm sorry. But I'll always have something new to talk about. In the meantime, we could just look into each other's eyes. Let's see. Oh god. Is this it? Hey, do you like horror? I remember we talked about it a little bit before when you first joined the club. I can enjoy horror novels, but not really horror movies. The problem I have with horror movies is that most of them just rely on easy tactics. Like dark lighting and scary looking monsters and jump scares and things like that. It's not fun or inspiring to get scared by stuff that just takes advantage of human instinct. But with novels, it's a little different. I need water again. This is a lot of reading. The story and writing need to be descriptive enough to put a genuinely disturbing thought into the reader's head. It really needs to etch them deeply into the story and characters and just mess with your mind. In my opinion, there's nothing more creepy than things just being slightly off. Like if you set up a bunch of expectations on what the story is going to be about, and then you just start inverting things and pulling the pieces apart. That's what I love about like, uh... Uh... No, HP Lovecraft isn't really an example, but like... God... There's some like random short story collections that I read and I never remember the author's names, but uh... Like, if you guys see- I know Ground Groundhog's Day is not a, not a horror movie by any stretch of the imagination, but that movie... Just the way everything loops and then something's different every time. I love that shit so much. It's like it's like roguelike video games, like Binding of Isaac, Enter the Gungeon, when everything is different every time and you never know what to expect. It's fucking incredible. I love it. Oh wait, I should have read that. Anyway. Like they just know something horribly wrong is hiding beneath the cracks, just waiting to surface. God, just thinking about it gives me the chills. That's the kind of horror I can really appreciate. But I guess you're the kind of person who plays cute romance games, right? You've been looking at my Steam folders! You've been looking at my Steam folders! <laughs> Don't worry. I won't make you read any horror stories anytime soon. I can't really complain if we just stick with the romance. You ever have that thing happen where you just get anxious for no reason? Like you're just minding your own business and you realize you're feeling really anxious. And you're sitting there like, what am I even anxious about right now? So you start to think about all the things you might be anxious about. And that makes you even more anxious. <laughs> That's the worst. If you're ever feeling anxious, I'll help you relax a bit. Besides, in this game, all our worries are gone forever. This is some cosmic horror existentialist bullshit, I swear. Just put my emotions on blast. That's cool. A lot of like clicking that I gotta get to to another fucking text box. When is the end of the game? She said this is the good ending, so I mean like this should be the end, right? You know it's a neat form of literature? Rap. I actually used to hate rap music. Maybe just because it was popular, or I would only hear the junk they play on the radio. But some some of my friends got more into it and it helped me keep an open mind. Rap might even be more challenging than poetry in some ways, since you need to fit your lines to a rhythm and there's much more emphasis on wordplay. When people can put all that together and still deliver a powerful message, it's really amazing. You talking about Kendrick Lamar? That's my boy! Love Kendrick. Kinda wish I had a rapper in the literature club. <laughs> Sorry if that sounds silly, but it would be really interesting to see what they come up with. It would be really, it would really be a learning experience. God, so while I'm waiting for new text, oh, never mind. I can't help but wonder how things would be different if the game just gave me a route in the first place. 
I think I would end up forcing you onto my route anyway. It has less to do with me not having a route and more to do with me knowing that nothing is real. I think the only difference would be that I may not have needed to take such drastic measures to be with you. Maybe the rest of the club would still be around. Not that it really matters. It's all, it all lost its meaning once I found out it wasn't real. So I really don't miss those days or anything. I really don't. Anyway, what I was going to say before the text popped up again. And I'm going to take another drink of water. I'm just wonder, I'm wondering what attracts everyone to Yuri. I, like I said when um, I first started playing the game, there's something about dark-haired, shy girls that I really, really like. So, Matt, have you ever wondered what it feels like to die? It's something I used to think about pretty often. But recently, I think I've actually learned what it feels like. I don't really understand it, but whenever you quit the game, it feels like I'm instantly put to sleep, left with nothing but my thoughts. But after a few seconds, my thoughts start to fill with incoherent jumbled patterns. I see static and rapid flashes of color while hearing all kinds of weird screaming noises. At that point, I can't even form my own thoughts anymore. I'm just endlessly hammered by the flashing and screaming, unable to move or even think. I'm pretty sure in that moment, I don't really exist, but for some reason, I can remember it anyway. After some immeasurable amount of time, it stops in an instant and I'm back in my own mind. And you're here with me. I have no idea what it means for the game to quit, or why that stuff happens to me. And I also don't know how you always come back and put everything back to normal. But if you could do me a favor and do that to me as little as possible, that would be really great. It's really not very pleasant at all to be trapped in that screaming void. But in the end, you always fix it, and that makes me feel like you really do care about me. So I have to thank you for that. It makes me feel even closer to you when you're here with me. This game is great. This game is fantastic. Just by the by. I don't know if I said that enough. This game is really fucking good and I can't wait to see what the developers do next because apparently they are doing another game. There are Easter eggs hidden within the game files for this game. Oh. By the way, there's something that's been bothering me. You know how this takes place in Japan? Well, I assume you knew that, right? Or at least decided it probably does. I don't think you're actually told at any point where this takes place. Is this even really Japan? I mean, aren't the classrooms and stuff kind of weird for a Japanese school? Not to mention everything is in English. It feels like everything is just there because it needs to be, and the actual setting is an afterthought. It's kind of giving me an identity crisis. All my memories are really hazy. I feel like I'm at home, but I have no idea where home is in the first place. I don't know how to describe it any better. Imagine looking out your window, but instead of your usual yard, you're in some completely unknown place. Would you still feel like you were home? Would you want to go outside? I mean, I guess if we never leave this room, it doesn't really matter anyway. As long as we're alone and safe together, this really is our home. And we can still watch that pretty sunset night after night. I had to give my cat water. It's now been 40 minutes. I just mean how nothing that we do is special. Just being in school, or working at some job for some company. It's like you're completely replaceable and the world wouldn't miss you if you were gone. It makes me really want to go and change the world after I graduate. But the older I get, the more I realize that it's an immature frame of thinking. It's not like I could just go and change the world. Like, what are even the chances that I'll be the one to invent artificial intelligence or become president? It feels like I'm never going to make up for the heaps of resources. That's why I think the key to happiness is just to be hopelessly selfish. Just to look out for oneself and those who happen to be their friends only because they grew up with them. Never mind the fact that they're spending their entire life taking and consuming and never giving back. But when people realize the world would benefit more from them killing themselves, they change their whole philosophy. It's like they have to justify their reason to live by tricking themselves into thinking they're doing good. Anyway, I want to live my life desperately striving to pay back my lifetime's worth of consumption. If I ever surpass that point, then I'm a net positive and I can die happy. Of course, even if I fail to do that, I think I would be too selfish to kill myself anyway. So much for being a good person, right? <laughs> 
You know, it's been a while since we've done one of these, so let's go for it. Here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when I talk to people who are impressed by my writing, they say things like, I could never do that. It's really depressing, you know? As someone who loves more than anything else to share the joy of exploring your passions, it pains me when people think that being good just comes naturally. That's how it is with everything, not just writing. When you try something for the first time, you're probably going to suck at it. Sometimes when you finish, you'll feel really proud and even want to share it with everyone. But maybe after a few weeks you come back to it and you realize it was never really any good. That happens to me all the time. It can be really it can be pretty disheartening to put so much time and effort into something and then you realize it sucks. But that tends to happen when you're always comparing yourself to the top professionals. When you reach out for the stars, they're always going to be out of your reach, you know? The truth is, you have to climb up there step by step. And whenever you can reach a milestone, first you look back and see how far you've gotten. And then you look ahead and realize how much more there is to go. So sometimes it can help to set the bar a little lower. Trying to find something you think is pretty good but not world class. And you can make that your own personal goal. It's also really important to understand the scope of what you're trying to do. If you jump right into a huge project and you're still an amateur, you'll never get it done. So if you're talking about writing, a novel might be too much at first. Why not try some short stories? The great thing about short stories is that you can focus on just one thing that you want to do right. That goes for small projects in general. You can really focus on one, the one or two things. It's such a good learning experience and a stepping stone. Oh, one more thing. Writing isn't something where you just reach into your heart and something beautiful comes out. Just like drawing and painting, it's a skill in itself to learn how to express what you have inside. That means there are a lot of methods and guides and basics to it. Reading up on that stuff can be super eye-opening. That sort of planning and organization will really help prevent you from getting overwhelmed and giving up. And before you know it, you start sucking less and less. Nothing comes naturally. Our society, our art, everything, it's built on thousands of years of human innovation. So as long as you start on that foundation and take it step by step, you too can do amazing things. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Wow. Wowie. Hello everybody, welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. I figured out what I need to do. And Monica, I'm so sorry I have to do this. I have to delete you. You gotta go. There we go. Oh, yep, yeah, there she goes. What's happening? Matt, what's happening to me? It hurts. It hurts so much. Help me, Matt. Please hurry and help me. Help me! Monica does not exist. Did you do this to me, Matt? Did you? Did you delete me? Yes, I did. Hello, so, um, what you miss, uh, I have the audio, so I'll probably just take, uh, a clip from YouTube or something and use it because I wasn't recording because I'm a fucking dumbass. But, um,. So, I deleted Monica's character file. It is not there. So now she's having an existential crisis. How could you do this to me? We were all I had left. I sacrificed everything for us to be together. Everything. I loved you so much, Matt. I trusted you. Do you just want to torture me? Watch me suffer? Were you only pretending to be kind just to hurt me even more? Yep. I never thought anyone could be as horrible as you are. You win, okay? You win. You killed everyone. I hope you're happy. There's nothing left for now. You can stop playing. Go find some other people to torture. Matt? You completely, truly make me sick. Goodbye. Well then! Bye, Monica. 
No, it's just a black screen. Oh. I still love you. I can't help it. What's wrong with me? How horrible am I for you to hate me this much? All my friends. I did so many awful things. So many selfish and disgusting things. I... I shouldn't have done any of this. I'm just messing up a world that I don't even belong in. A world that you wanted to be a part of. I ruined it. I ruined everything. Maybe that's why you deleted me. Because I destroyed everything that you wanted. How could I do that to someone I love? That's not love. That's... That's what? Huh? I've made up my mind. Matt? I know I said that I deleted everyone else, but that was kind of an exaggeration. I couldn't find it in myself to do it. Even though I knew the way, I, even though I knew they weren't real, they were still my friends, and I loved them all. And I loved the Literature Club. I really did love the Literature Club. That's why I'm going to do this. I know it's the only way for everyone to be happy. And if I really love you, you gonna bring him back? Then. Oh, okay. Hey! Eh. <laughs> Monica's gone. Sayori's back, so is Yuri Natsuki. Hey, I'm gonna do a resync here just in case my audio got fucked up, so. It's an ordinary school day like any other. As usual, I'm surrounded by couples and friend groups walking to school together. I always tell myself that it's about time I meet some girls or something like that. Hey Matt! Well, there's already there already is one girl. That girl is Sayori, my neighbor and good friend since we were children. We used to walk to school together every day. And recently we've picked up that habit once again. Matt, are you proud of me? F for what? You know, for waking up on time. Well, you've been doing that for a while now. Uh-huh. But you never even said anything about it. Sorry, I'm moving my mic. Even though we walked to school together every day. Yeah, well, yeah, I always thought it was implied. It's embarrassing to say it out loud. Come on, please. It's good motivation. Fine, fine. I'm proud of you, Sayori. <laughs> we cross the street together and make our way to school. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly speckled with other students making their daily commute. By the way, Matt, have you decided on a club to join yet? A club? I told you al already, I'm really not... I start to say what I always do, but I'm not interested in joining any clubs. But something tells me Sayori would take more offense to that now. After all, how could I tell her that clubs are a waste of time? When she's starting a club of her very own. Wait, is Sayori gonna be the- Yes! This is great! Sayori's gonna be the new, uh... Literature club president. Dope. Actually, yeah. I think I've decided on a club. Really? Which one? Tell me! Hmm. I think I'll keep it a surprise. Boo. You meanie. Be patient, you'll find out soon enough. I used to ask myself why I let myself get le I used to ask myself why I let myself get lectured by such a carefree girl. But I start, started to realize that in a way, I envy her. When Sayori puts her mind to something, she can accomplish great things. So that's why I feel like I should do something special for her. School day is as ordinary as ever and it's over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stand up gathering my motivation. Let's see... I recall the room number of the club from a, fly from a flyer I saw. I walk across the school and upstairs, a section of the school that I rarely visit being generally used for blah blah blah. For long I find the room. I timidly open the door in front of me. Hello? Ah! Mad? What are you doing here? Well, I just... Eh, I glance around the room. Huh. So you're the mad that Sayori is always talking about. Thank you for stopping by. It's a pleasure to meet you, Matt. We're the Literature Club. I hope you enjoy our vi your visit. Come on, Yuri. No need to be so formal. 
He's gonna think we're really strict or something. Uh, sorry, Natsuki. The tall one, whose name is apparently Yuri, seems to be quite shy compared to the others. In comparison, the girl named Natsuki, despite her size, seems like the assertive one. Well, it's nice to meet the both of you. I look forward to working with you. Working? Matt, don't tell me. You're... That's right. The club I've decided to join is yours, Sayori. The Literature Club. Sayori's eyes light up. No way! No way! Ah! Sayori wraps her arms around me, jumping up and down. Hey. <laughs> well, if Sayori is this happy, then I'm sure it won't be so bad to have you around. Not to mention, there's four of us now. That means we could become an officially recognized club. I don't know what to say! We have to celebrate. Uh, what an appropriate day for that, isn't it? Yeah! After all, Natsuki decided to... Hey, don't ruin the surprise! <laughs> Sorry. Everyone sit down at the table, okay? How about I make some tea as well? The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. Natsuki and Yuri walk over to the corner of the room where Natsuki grabs a wrapped tray and Yuri opens the closet. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Sayori. Natsuki proudly marches back to the table, tray in hand. Okay, are you ready? Ta-da! Whoa! Natsuki lifts the foil off the tray to reveal a dozen white fluffy cupcakes decorated to look like little cats. The whiskers are drawn on with icing and little pieces of chocolate were used to make the ears. So cute! Wow, those look amazing! <laughs> well, you know. Just hurry and take one. Sayori grabs the first one and then I follow. It's delicious! Sayori talks with her mouth full and has already managed to get icing on her face. I turn the cupcake around on my fingers looking for the best angle to take a bite. Natsuki is quiet. I can't help but notice her sneaking glances in my direction. Is she waiting for me to take a bite? I finally bite down. The icing is sweet and full of flavor. I wonder if she made it herself. This is really good. Thank you, Natsuki. Well, of course it is. I'm a pro, after all. There's no need to thank me or anything. As Natsuki struggles to accept the compliment, Yuri returns to the table, carrying a tea set. She carefully places the teacup down in front of her. Blah, blah, blah. You keep a whole tea set? Don't worry, teachers give permission. After all, it doesn't hot cup of tea. Yep, yep. <laughs> Already trying to impress her new member, Yuri? Uh, it's not that. That's not... Unsalted Yuri looks away. I meant that, you know. I believe you. Blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna skip the unseen text, just because this is stuff we've seen before. Blah blah blah. Manga manga manga. Oh wait. Okay, so they basically they just talk about literature, something about manga. Sayori's president. So yeah, I have to read manga. Jeez. You're the one who suggested we diversify. You should be a little more open-minded. It's kind of hurtful. Hurtful? I didn't realize. With a guilty expression, Yuri thinks to herself, I'm sorry for disrespecting your interests, Natsuki. If you're into it, then I'm sure it's a worthy form of literature. Are you just saying that? No. I've, I've realized my error. So if you're willing to consider starting a novel... Then I'll offer my gratitude by finding a manga to read as well. Really? I mean, it makes me happy that you do that for me, Yuri. You can trust me to find something you'll really like, okay? Same here. Perhaps I'll visit the bookstore after the club meeting. J just you? Uh, would you like to come along with me? Um, if you don't mind. Not at all. I always go alone, so... Yeah, me too. This is so cute! Sayori, shut up. I'll show you some manga there too, okay? Yes. I look forward to it. Natsuki and Yuri start to clean up the food. <laughs> I guess the meeting's over, huh? Yeah, looks like it. It's nice to see everyone getting along. Isn't it? I think everyone likes you too, Matt. You think so? Well, everyone seems to get along a little better with you around Sayori. Aw, Matt. Don't say something like that, it's embarrassing. Well, whatever. It was just, I was surprised when you told me you were starting a club. But I think you're pulling it off just fine. And we're gonna make the best club ever. Now that you joined, every day is gonna be so much fun. Hey Matt, I really wanted to thank you. 
I mean, I'm really happy that you joined the club and everything. But the truth is, I always knew you were going to. <laughs> There's actually something else. I wanted to thank you for getting rid of Monica. That's right. I know everything that she did. Maybe it's because I'm the president now. But I really know everything, Matt. <laughs> I know how hard you try to make everyone happy. I know about all the awful things that Monica did to make everyone really sad. But none of that matters anymore. It's just us now. And you made me the happiest girl in the whole world. Oh no. I can't wait to spend every day like this. With you. Forever and ever. Oh Jesus. F-O-R-E-V-E. -E. No. Okay. Oh Jesus. Eh? What's happening? I won't let you hurt him. Who? It hurts. Is Monica trying to bring herself back into the game? I'm sorry, I was wrong. There's no happiness here after all. Goodbye, Sayori. Goodbye, Matt. Goodbye, Literature Club. Is that the end of the game? Whoa. Is that Monica saying, can you hear me? Oh. Hi, it's me. Um, so you know how I've been like practicing piano and stuff? And what is this? I'm not really any good at it yet, like at all. But I wrote you a song and I was kind of hoping that I could show it to you because I worked really, really hard on it. So yeah. Playing audio ddlc.ogg. What? This is fucking dope! Every day, I imagine a future where I can be with you. Oh, this is so cool! This is so cool. What will it take just to find that special day? What will it take just to find that special day? That is so cool. Oh my god. Holy shit, what a ride this game is. Everybody Oh, that's it. Dan Salvato, I have been saying your name correctly. Oh. I never saw that picture of Natsuki. Satchley did the character art. I gotta find I gotta find them. Background art, Velen Quint. Oh my god, this game is so fucking good. Oh my god, I'm so happy I played this. Oh, I'm sad it's over. Oh, really? Dan did the music, too? It's another picture of Natsuki I didn't see. Jillian Ashcraft. Why do I feel like I've heard that name before? Does my pen only write better words for Special thanks, Masha Guten, Kagefumi. I wonder if the game is actually deleting these files. All the stickers. Guys, if you haven't played this game, it's free on Steam. Play the game. Is there any way I can skip this? Oh, special thanks. Oh, to me and Monica. Yeah, thank you. That's a little unsettling. <laughs> oh my god, thank you, Dan Salvato, for making such a fucking fantastic game. Oh my god, I can't wait to see what you guys make next!
Oh, it's such a good game! This is my final goodbye to the Literature Club. I finally understand the Literature Club is truly a place where no happiness can be found. To the very end, it can continue to expose innocent minds to a horrific reality. A reality that our world is not designed to comprehend. I can't let any of my friends undergo that, su that same hellish epiphany. For the time it lasted, I wanted to thank you for making all of my dreams come true, for being a friend to all the club members. Most of all, thank you for being a part of my literature club. With everlasting love, Monica. Script file. Please reinstall the game. Oh, it just ends. <laughs> oh my god, okay. Well, that was the end of Doki Doki Literature Club. Let's look at my recording here. <laughs> oh my god, this is such a good game. Oh, what a fucking ride. Anyway, that's it. So thank you guys so very much for watching the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this one, please consider subscribing. And until then, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.